It's the Score North Twin Show. Reckless speculation. Oh. Yeah, so let's see if let's see if the stove will even turn on here. The Twins yeah. hot stove. It's been you're supposed to start your stove, you know, once a week just to make sure that it's right. still operational. The Who's Twins cleaning it? Done that. That's a good question. I don't. That's my question. Because like you don't want to get that soot in there, then you got problems. Oh, I know who's cleaning it. Uh, Randy Dobnak needs something to do. <laughs> wow, Dobber, poor Dobber. The Dobber, the Dobber man, the Dobber, still on that forty man. So here's what we're gonna do on today's Scorner Twin Show. We will later on continue our countdown of the top twenty five twins of all time. We've got a random twin of the week, but let's spend the first ten to fifteen minutes giving you a hot stove update. There's some questions we can throw out here. You know. But uh, as we do every week, we give you the Twins transaction scoreboard update. So outgoing key players include Sonny Gray, Kenta Maeda, Emilio Pagan, Andrew Stevenson, who's just kind of a fourth outfielder, uh, Tyler Malley, Michael A. Taylor is still out there in free agency. Joey Gallo has signed with the Nationals. <laughs> Donnie Barrels is still a free agent. So those guys are all off your team as of right now. Incoming, about a month ago, they signed former Royals right-handed reliever Josh Stamont, who Doogie actually caught up with. You can go to his Twitter account, see an interview with the Twins' newest reliever. You know, 30 years old, former second-round pick. He was actually really good in late relief for the Royals in 2020 and 21, but he's in the mix. And then a couple weeks ago, it was Ryan Jensen, a 26-year-old right-handed pitcher, former first-round pick. I think the Cubs drafted him mm -hmm. in the first round. He throws like 95 to 100 miles an hour, but has no idea where it's going sometimes. He had one of the highest walk rates in the minor leagues the last couple of years. Uh, and then the news came out, was it this morning or yesterday, that another former first-round pick, 25-year-old center fielder, and this is what's interesting, he's a center fielder, and he is on the Twins' 40-man roster because they claimed him off waivers from Texas, Bubba Thompson. So here's a snippet of a Bubba Thompson scouting report. And it is interesting. He is the game's fastest player by measure of StatCast's average sprint speed metric. So the Twins just claimed the fastest player in professional baseball. <laughs> but <laughs> his top-of-the-scale speed is countered by bottom-of-the-scale ratings in terms of average exit velocity with his bat and hard hit rate. So he's kind of swinging a wet, rolled-up newspaper uh, he's a low on base guy, some power, but ha hasn't really translated and a stolen base guy. But in terms of just like covering ground in center field, Bubba Thompson, former first round pick. So those are those are the moves that the twins have made here. And I will say, Declan, we were texting about this. I don't want these to be the only moves, but you can mm -hmm. do worse than taking flyers on former top 25 overall picks that are still 25, 26 or younger. So I don't hate taking flyers on these guys. Yeah, I actually don't hate it either. And, you know, Thompson was even a top 50 prospect in 2000, I think going into 2019. So at one point, mm -hmm. this guy was regarded as one of the best prospects in all of baseball. Yeah, I don't hate taking a flyer on things like this. I just would hope that this is not obviously like your marquee moves. And yes, I have heard it at nauseum that they can continue to make moves and, and they've made late additions. And, you know, even in 2022, which by the way, there was a lockout, so no one could do any moves for the entire offseason of baseball. Yeah. Uh, but if if you're going to add someone like these guys and take a flyer in spring training and see if they can fit as an option for you, I, I don't hate it. I have, I don't hate it at all. So Thompson's the uh, potential replacement for the Stevenson character, right? Who, who was well, with the Saints. Could most he be the, the potential year? replacement for Michael A. Taylor? Is because he, he has like 300 career plate appearances. He's been up and down with the Rangers the last couple of years. Yeah. I wonder how much, uh, what what is Michael A. Taylor's asking price? That's what I'm curious about. Yeah. I mean, clearly I don't know, they don't, man. clearly they're not bringing him back, but I thought he did an absolutely fine job, worst case scenario, but they well, must have other plans. And that's, that's what, that's the one thing we don't know is, and, and this will get into the next chunk here, which is uh, Rocco was doing some media this week and Rocco went on KFXN radio in the Minneapolis area. And he said he, I'm paraphrasing. He said, he's confident the twins will make a relatively big move still. And he cited some of the other ones they've made in late January and February. Um, 
right now the mm-hmm. Twins payroll, if you account for, I think Nick Gordon is still out there. He's the only arbitration guy that they haven't solved. But that's that's like a million dollars. So if you if you account for filling out the twenty six man roster with, you know, some of the minimum wage players, they're tied up for a hundred eighteen million dollars in payroll, which is about twentieth among the thirty teams. Last year's payroll was forty one million dollars more, one hundred fifty nine million dollars. But it was only it was sixteenth. So they've gone from right now, if the season started today, well, they would go from sixteenth to twentieth in payroll. Because I think a lot of teams, and there's still a bunch of players to be signed, but a lot of teams have kind of come down the payroll scale with the local TV revenue uncertainty. But they have, to this point, they have stripped it from 159 down to 118 million dollars. This is what they said that they planned to do, and I think we all thought, really? But you're right. It, this is a baseball problem. This is not a Twins problem. Like, like this is not the Twins being like, well, we're gonna be cheap um, because of the relatively low drop in overall payroll rankings this is this is a diamond sports group problem of those teams have got, gone down the issue is the teams that don't you know the dodgers are spending like drunken sailors and so the, the competitive balance is going to take a hit here potentially um but i would imagine again i would imagine if we're going to see any type of significant move from the twins it's going to be a trade. I am not holding out any hope that they sign a guy and we're all like, Oh my God. I I think if they, if they were to make the type of uh, signing that they did with Josh Donaldson a few years back, I would be absolutely shocked. I think it would be a trade. Yeah. And it sounds like the AL West is the one that's been kind of open for business. You know, uh, Astros GM basically said, we want a left field bat that's ready made and ready to go. And the Astros clearly are still trying to push forward and look like still the team to beat in the American league. Um, and or a right fielder, not a left fielder, obviously, because because uh, they have one of the best left fielders in baseball. But then the Mariners, too, are looking for infield help. So Polanco could be a fit there and, and they could even sell off a starting pitcher. So that path would make sense. But one of these guys like Blake Snell is still out there. And how much longer is he going to wait around? He, he apparently asked the moon from the Yankees and they said no. And they actually pivot to Marcus Stroman. But wow. how much longer are these guys going to hold out here until they don't have jobs with spring training basically starting in? two or three weeks that's the thing dude like there's some there's some really interesting names still on the board right now a couple that came off the board in the last two days reese hoskins who we've talked about as a first base option and a guy that when he's healthy is a 30 home run guy uh he signed a two-year 34 million dollar deal with the brewers so 17 million a year i think we had talked about 20 plus million so that that seems like kind of a discount uh josh Hader signed five years 95 million with the astros and that's what Judd's saying is they're not they're not doing like a ninety five million dollar uh, contract, right? But you know, my, like Michael Taylor is still out there in terms of if you're just looking for bringing the band back. Blake Snell, okay, the Yankees said no. Do some Cody Bellinger is is out there. He's twenty eight years old. He can play center field. He's a left handed bat, and you're probably more in need of a right handed bat. Uh, Jordan Montgomery has been a rock solid left-handed starter for the last three or four years with some, some big time postseason cred. Yep. Hector Neris, 35 year old lights out late inning reliever. Do I guess what I'm wondering is as we get closer to pitchers and catchers reporting, and if half the league is kind of saying like, Oh, we can't really afford the normal sticker prices. Do any of these guys say, okay, we'll do kind of like Carlos Correa did a couple years ago. Do they right. take like a one-year deal yeah. and the Twins can swoop in and be beneficiaries of that? Absolutely. And look, um, the, the guy that obviously orchestrated the Correa deal here was Scott Boris, right? Scott yep. Boris's unemployed client list right now includes Bellinger, Jordan Montgomery, Blake Snell, Matt Chapman. Wow. And so I could I could see that for sure. Because the Correa thing proved to be a pretty good, pretty decent workaround. So, yes, I could see that. The other weird thing that's going on, and this has nothing to do with the Twins, but it has a lot to do with payrolls in baseball, is like a team like the Red Sox, which has their own network and promised to spend, is really not spending. Yeah. Like compared, so I could I see a in progress March spring training. I've got three guys still not, not signed signing for a year at a reasonable price. Absolutely, I could. Yes. Reckless speculation. I mean, if you go out and sign Blake Snell, 
you have replaced Sonny Gray. You have an ace at the top of your order. You reunite him with Rocco Baldelli, who he pitched with when Rocco was there in that organization. If you get Blake Snell, I am all for giving basically this lack of a horrible offseason and not doing anything after the most important season you just had in 20 plus years. Well, I would and, and and lack of payroll, I know that is a big thing. But if Blake Snell comes to you or Boris comes to you with you have the relationship with and says, All right, we'll do the three year contract with a first year opt out at, you know, average annual value of twenty five, thirty million, whatever it is, I agreed. sign up for that every time. Use us. And that's that that was the Korea thing. It's like, all right, if this is the only way that the twins get access to Carlos Korea, use us for a year. <laughs> and and then and of course, then there was the whole saga from two off seasons ago where he winds up finding his way back to the twins. But yep. to that point too, let's say this makes sense. They've already done it with a Scott Boris client. Use yep. us. Hey, let's get let's get your guy to camp. Sure, it's a three year deal if you want it to be. It's a one-year deal if you don't. It's 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 a hundred percent up to you. I would be interested with Cody Bellinger as a center fielder with Blake Snell and Jordan Montgomery, all three Boris clients. And on the payroll front, all of these guys would be like twenty to thirty million dollar players, probably. Let's say you tack on twenty five million dollars to the one eighteen you're you're tied up for right now you'd still be shaving $15 million off last year's payroll. So you'd, you'd still be slashing payroll even if you added one of these guys. Yeah, and, and, and guess what? You sell tickets. Yeah, because they would be a better team. Like, you'd have... Like, yep. Declan would toy, he would toy with potentially going back to the small package of 20 games, but I, Blake Snell would make an impact, right? Like, and, and I get it. The revenue is going to be down, but what better way to drive excitement than like a spring training move? Now, do, do I see that? Probably, probably not. But yeah. it's it, the other interesting thing on Snell and Bellinger is this. They are they are in situations where I get their asking price because in Bellinger's case, again, the Cubs have their own network. So exactly why the Cubs are being cheap beyond the fact that the, uh, the Ricketts family that owns them is sort of cheap doesn't make well, a hell of a lot of sense. But they're not like it's it, we're in the middle of a process here. So like they're not being cheap. They're they're the favorites to bring him back. And it's just right. we're not there's no deadline. That's the problem. It's like Yeah, that's true too. These players are going to sign. You're going to have Bellinger and Snell and Montgomery are going to be making a combined 100 million dollars a year across baseball next year. But if if any one of these guys wanted to do the Carlos Correa contract, yep. Well, it's Let's get it on. Come on, Scotty Boris. Would you call Scott up like late at night and be like, hey, Scotty, I'm just thinking here. Use me. Don't Use you us. think he's already laid that groundwork? 100%. Just like he did with Correa. Dude, the yeah. smartest. Hey, we're we're going to try and get, uh, you know, 10 years out of the Cubs here, but let's let's put this in pencil like we did with Carlos Correa. Be interesting. Yes. He's a, I, a lot of people hate him, but he's incredibly smart. Yes, he's. I mean, he's the best agent in the history. Yeah. Of so Asian yes, football. I yes, I think there are probably side deals, but I can see why if you went to the Yankees and they're like, "Oh no, no, we can't afford that," you'd sort of be like, "Well, screw you." Yes, you can. Yeah. Uh, just one more nugget here before we get to the next slice of our top twenty-five twins of all time. Couple of big strikeout, all or nothing hitters from recent Twins history have found new homes since our last episode. Joey Gallo, a major league deal, $5 million, I think it was, to the Nationals, and Miguel Sano, minor league contract to the Angels. Your thoughts? Declan? I, I, I'm i shocked Gallo's still kicking around here. This is this is incredible. This it's is amazing, absolutely man. incredible. I mean, it does help that, obviously, you know, the universal DH, so there's actually 30 suitors, and there's, and, you know, he's not a horrible fielder, so he can actually still play a little bit of defense, but, I mean, this guy is... I, like Kyle Schwarber is had an incredible three true outcome season, one of the yeah. most insane ones we've yeah. ever seen. But there's value in that guy. There's insane value still in that guy, even though he's only going to hit 190 because he hits bombs and he gets on base like crazy. Gallo, th 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 I, I can't believe someone is taking a shot on him. If the you, Sano hey, thing. If, yeah. if you had to choose one of them, hey, the Twins have to bring back one of these guys on a major league contract for at least one year. And they have to be on your team through the All Star break. You can't release them. Would you rather have Gallo back or Sano back? 
Oh God, that's a hell of a question. I think I, Sano, I would take Sano be, because he's it's right more handed. fun because he <laughs> and, and he's a lightning rod. Like Gallo, just Gallo was painful to watch, and and I know I know he got on base. Okay, so I I get that, but I Sano's failure sucked because he should have been good, and I think he was his own worst enemy at the end of the day in what he didn't do to be a consistently good player. But the year of Gallo was just difficult to watch. Yeah, I mean, I it wasn't think fun at all. Gallo I mean, can play some defense a little. Like you can put Gallo in the field, and it's not yeah. a, a mess. So no, he's pretty much a DH who can maybe play some first base, but you're you're not looking to put him out there. Uh, but and it, I would say like at their best, Sano was probably the better of the two offensively at their best, and you could use a right-handed hitter. But I thought Sano was sort of, and the thing with Miguel is I sort of thought that he was at times fun to watch. No, oh, yeah. it, it might have been because he yeah. screwed screwed up on on the bases or something like that. I'm trying to remember a really enjoyable stretch of Joey Gallo baseball as a twin. I think it was like as the a first twin? week, of the, like yeah. a week of the season. It was like it was okay. April nineteenth. <laughs> yeah, that was it. That's the date. Now, as a Ranger, if you if you you know were a Rangers yep. fan back in like 2018, well, I mean he was. We he was saw him show. in a futures game at mm-hmm. Target Field. Yep. And and he broke what the windshield on that uh four by four, right? That was parked yeah, up in right just field. Sitting out in the plaza. Yeah. Hit just a mammoth home run, but that's when great things were expected of Joey Gallo, and we didn't yeah. see that. But good for him for getting another five million dollars for himself and his family. Joey Gallo to the yeah. Washington. Congratulations, Nashville. Joey. Nice job, Glad dude. I won't have to watch you. All right, boys, uh, we've been counting down the top twenty five twins of all time. This is a list that I have curated. Uh, even consulted with two former Twins general managers to see if did I miss something. Do you strongly disagree here or there? We've made it from 25 through 16, and today we're going to count down 15 through 11. So to this point, I'll just go through the ones that we've unveiled so far. Brad Radke, 25. Earl Batty, 24. Jim Perry, 23. Greg Gagne, 22. Cesar Tovar, 21. And then Bob Allison, 20, Joe Nathan, 19, Rick Aguilera, 18, Chuck Knobloch, 17, and the rat Gary Gaetti, 16. <laughs> All right. The rat. Brings us to number 15, the 15th greatest twin of all time, Camilo Pasquale. Mm, I love it. The first great starting pitcher in twins history. So he was with the Washington Senators. And then when the franchise moved, he was a twin. Only six years with the Twins, but he led the major leagues in strikeouts in three consecutive years, led the major leagues in shutouts in back-to-back years, and led the major leagues in complete games in back-to-back years. So he had like a three-year stretch where he was absolutely one of the best starting pitchers in the entire league, and he was the first great starting pitcher in Twins history. Camilo Pasquale. Very nice. Big curveball. Big curveball. curveball. Cuban. A lot and of the pitching coach, Cuban when, flair when, to his game. When I started to follow the Twins, he was the the first pitching coach I saw back when they were back when they were known commodities and not now where you take a guy from like a baseball and promote him and that's great too. But Camilo Pasquale, yes. now you're venting. No, I'm not. No, I don't. Do you care oh, to go on a side street yeah. and complain yeah. about the Twins? No, I'm just. No, I'm just right saying now. it used to be the pitching coach was this a former big leaguer with a big chaw like Johnny Padres. He'd come out, hey kid. You know, no. I mean, I thought the Twins pitching fine. staff was awesome last year. So it was very you, good. You can keep yelling at clouds if you want to. It was no, 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 no. I'm just saying it's. I'm. I'm, I'm pointing out it's changed. <laughs> yes. I'm a. I. I am the uh, conduit from yesterday to today <laughs> when it comes to baseball. So Camilo Pasquale, not for his. I mean, I'm sure he was a great pitching coach, but he's on nah, this list I don't for his. Have any idea if he was any good or not? But Number yes, fourteen. Mm-hmm. Another another legendary Cuban Twins player, Zoilo Versailles. Oh, yeah. The 1965 yeah. American League yeah, Most right Valuable now. Player. Mm-hmm. So his his 1965 season, mm-hmm. he led the league in runs scored with 126, led the league in doubles with 45, led the league in triples with 12. He actually led the league for like three straight years in triples. Uh, he had hmm. 308 total bases, which led Major League Baseball. And he played a gold glove shortstop that year as well. So he was MVP gold glove at shortstop and also hit a go-ahead homer in game one of the 1965 World Series off Don Drysdale. 
and the Twins held on to it. So that's one of the greatest seasons from front to back of any player in Twins history. And uh, like I said, for a three-year stretch, he was one of the most dynamic, exciting players in all of baseball. I think if he had been greater for longer, he'd be yeah. higher up than 14th on this list. But Absolutely. We're, we're giving him peak greatness does weigh heavier, in my opinion, than just being around for a long time. And mm -hmm. Zoila Versailles was the MVP of the league in 1965. I, I always see him pop up, though, like on your classic today's like Bleacher Report or like worst MVPs in professional sports. I do see Zoila Versailles always pop up on those lists. The disrespect. Oh, buzz kill. Look at it right mm -hmm. here. 2006 wow. Twins in, Twins uh, Hall of Fame. Look Is that Zoilo? It looks like it actually looks it's like Zoilo. Rod Carew more than Zoilo. It does Zoilo, kind of look like Rodney. Say. It's yeah. Zoilo. Yeah. See, look. Number Pretty two. sure they just recycled yeah. ahead from. It does look like Rod Rodney Curry. a little bit, but it's but but look, he's got <laughs> glasses, okay? I mean, the dude's got glasses. You got to <laughs> like that at least. Yeah, he was, uh, yeah, 19. So he was, yeah, he was a two-time All-Star as well with the Twins, one-time MVP. So Zoilo. Yes. Okay, number 13, the face of the Twins starting rotation in the 1980s, the 1988 American League Cy Young Award winner. Oh, yeah. Frankie Viola, sweet, sweet music. Sweet music. Sweet music, yeah. Do not the band. Yep. And I think, too, like po postseason performance definitely helps elevate you here. It, game, he, so he started three games in the 87 World Series, including game one and game seven. Yep. In games one and seven... He went, so again, set the tone for the series and then closed the series out. Mm -hmm. No pressure. He goes 16 combined innings in those two games, gives up three runs and like 11 hits in 16 innings. So he was mm -hmm. lights out in the two biggest games of his life, game one and game seven of the World Series. Mm -hmm. uh, and then he follows it up, 1988, wins the Cy Young Award. They wind up trading him to the Mets, right? 1989. Yes. 1990. Which helped them win the 91 World Series and and yes, because he he had a contractual falling out, demanded a trade, got traded, and that trade was huge. So yeah, because yes. they got they got back Tappany and Aguilera, Aguilera, right? In that and deal. and the key to that trade was a starting pitcher who is now uh, passed away, David West. He was supposed to be the big stud, he wasn't. But yes, they got the closer and a really good starter. Yeah. So Frankie V, sweet music, number thirteen, okay. which brings us to number twelve. Tory Hunter is the 12th All best right. twin in history, according to me. One of the best, probably the best defensive center fielder in twins history. Seven gold gloves as a twin. Also, especially early in his career, the analytics loved him as a guy who could cover pasture. Uh, but also on the offensive side, he had 214 homers as a twin and seven seasons with at least 20 home runs. So just a consistent 20 to 30 home run guy who played elite defense, at a tough position, and really he was the heart and soul yeah. of those early 2000s Twins teams, uh, and then came back and, and helped out as a 39-year-old veteran in 2015. Yeah. So good. Tory Hunter, 12th on this list. Yeah, I mean, I, I I would say heartbeat, yeah, of of those teams, and yeah, when he came back in 2015, even all of a sudden, randomly, the Twins pop up after losing 90 straight games and are competing for a wild card and are competitive for the first time in five years, and I think a lot of that had to do with Tory's presence, too. And it was his bat fell off significantly in the second half of that year. But in general, I mean, you talk about also guys that were just clutch and you needed a big hit. Tory was usually always there. And, and I loved his, the way he carried himself and his cocky attitude. I, th that team needed a guy like Tory Hunter. And in fact, I think the twins lacked missing that personality as maybe a missing piece on a lot of those other teams after he, he left. trucked that. Didn't he truck one of the White Sox yeah. catchers yeah, one catcher. time? Just, too. Just I think he can custom. Day. Um, he is one of the ones I think as well uh, of, of all of the players through the years who have left here in free agency. He is one I regret. Because he was what? still really good for that. Oh, yeah. The duration was, of that Angels contract. As I recall, it was Thanksgiving night. He signed with the Angels. And then opening day the next season was here yeah. in the Dome. And he got an ovation. He which did. in this town we don't always give. We no, like to boo people for leaving us. Yes. But but yes, at the time, get... it was correctly viewed as the Twins made a three-year offer and yep. the Angels made a five-year offer. And it was I think it was pretty similar money on an annual basis. But, but like that got like Lavelle put it out there. That got reported. 
Yep. And so I think fans were furious with the front office more than they yeah. were Tory Hunter. It was like, what are you supposed to do? I, I wanted a five-year deal to lose off for three. He also got an epic send-off. I was at both those games. Uh, epic send-off at the end of 07. They pulled him from center field in the, like, the eighth inning, and the entire place went berserk because they knew they were they were going to lose him in free agency. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But that's too bad. So Tory Hunter, number 12. And then number 11 here. He was only a twin for one year. Well, Jack Morris is the 11th oh. best twin wow. in franchise history. Interesting. And again, I, I put peak greatness above longevity. And you want to talk about peak greatness. Right. Yep. We think about game seven, which is the most iconic pitching performance in Major League history. But it wasn't like he was a slappy in the regular season. He was fourth in Cy Young voting in the American League for the season. Mm-hmm. So he was to a rocky start. And then really, and then really pitched well, starting Let's in like May up. or something. Let's I thought he got Jack off to Morris's a game log. I thought he got off to a rocky start because the Twins didn't until the 16 game win streak, which I think was in May of '91. They weren't playing well, and then they won 16 in a row, and that was it. So Jack, you're right, dude. Look at that steel trap memory. <laughs> so Jack had. I just can't recall who the Chargers' quarterbacks are. I'm fine when it comes to Twins history. <laughs> Through his first eight starts, he had an ERA of five and a half. Okay. And then from there, he he brought it from five and a half down to three and a half over the next however many months. So, and yeah, his uh, w- when he kind of snapped out of it, he went from just kind of getting pulled in the fifth inning, fourth inning, and then he snapped out of it at the same time they went on that ridiculous win streak. Yes. And he was a horse the rest of the way for the most part, like eight innings, nine, like complete games all over the place. Yep. And then he obviously gets a lot more credit on this list because he was the driving force for winning game seven, 10 inning performance, the most iconic pitching performance in baseball history. Mm-hmm. So Jack Morris, 11. So the five we did today are Camilo Pasquale, 15, Zoilo Versailles, 14, Frank Viola, 13, Tori Hunter, 12, and Jack Morris, 11. Top 10 is going to be really intriguing how they are, uh, how they fall. I think there's going to be some debate. Uh, well, there has to be, right? I, I will say this. I ran because I don't want to spoil it, but I ran my number one by both of the former Twins GMs that I was consulting with. Sure. And and I said, because it's, it's hard. There's like multiple options for who could be number one in Twins history. Right. And neither one of them pushed back on it. Okay. So... Maybe they were your just top play, five, or maybe right? They were just bored. And but like the top to five is probably because that that could be top five has possibilities. Yes, so it does. I look forward to it. So there you go. We'll, we'll 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 continue counting down now the ten remaining top twins in history next week. Uh, but let's get to a random twin of the week here, gentlemen. Where uh, this week I believe it is Judd who has the clues for us. The last handful of random twins are Tony Batista, Matt Garza, Kent Herbeck, CJ Crone, and Delman Young. Declan on a five-game winning streak here. Heater. Heater. He has 10 wins in random twin of the week. I have eight. Judd has seven. We can mm. shout out guesses whenever we want to. If one of us hits a third incorrect guess, a third strike, we're out. The other person wins. No Googling. Judd. Tell me when you're ready. All right. And away we effing go. This former twin is from South Carolina. He was a standout in high school in multiple sports, baseball, football, and basketball. On his high school football team, he played quarterback and was the punter. So a talented fellow. This former twin was a fourth round pick in 1997 and made his major league debut in 2002. Wow. A lot of good info here right out of the gate. Oh, we're not going to screw around here. Can I keep going? Dex, you you look like you might be. Keep going. Be fixing to guess. Okay. He played for six big league teams during his career. A well-traveled former twin. However, despite these frequent moves, he was traded only once. Interesting. So, okay. 
just kind of bouncing, bouncing around, all over the place. Bounced huh? around, bounced around, bounced around. Um, he won four gold gloves during his career. He actually hit for the cycle while playing with a National League team. Oh. I'm bad with cycles. Bad with cycles. Twin cycles you're probably good with, though. Kind of. I mean, Jason Kubel had the one. I left that game early. Whoops. Nope, he got traded more than once. Gary Ward hit one once. Hit for the cycle once. Okay. He made, this former twin made two all-star appearances, but neither of them came with Minnesota. Oh, my God. Who is this? So, I mean, this is... I want this so bad. Shout out to the Hall of Famer, Joe Maurer. This former twin spent 126 games as a teammate of Jolt and Joe. 126 games as a teammate of Joe Maurer. Interesting. Well, what? So, hold on. I think Can I you know be more the... specific about that. So, so he, so he, he played with the twins for he 126 played, games. He played in 126 games as a twin. As a twin. Yeah. Okay. So, I was just trying to bring okay. Joe's name because he sure. deserves, and everyone knows that I'm a huge Joe fan. So, back off for all of you people. Orlando Hudson. Here. Yes. Damn it, dude. Unbelievable. God, Declan is Declan's unstoppable. Unbelievable. Oh, HUD. Oh, HUD. I just saw a man fly. Great work. The last clue if I had to, to get there was Phil when saw this guy ignored in the Twins Clubhouse. Oh, I would have. Yeah. I, so I was one clue away. But then away. you would have got it. No, if no, I, no. That was my last clue. I had oh. like four more to come. No, no, no. <laughs> I wow, like dude, an epic heater. Six consecutive wins heater. for Declan here. Nice work, Dex. The O-Dog. The O-Dog. The O-Dog. Declan with 11 wins. I have eight. Judd with seven. Uh, it'll be my turn to throw out the clues for next week's episode. Nice job, I don't want Dex. this steam. I don't want this steam. Uh-uh. I'm out. <sighs> there I'm going to call in six next week. Plenty, man. It's been a while since... I haven't won since Butch Husky like three months ago. I jumped out to a huge lead on you guys, and Declan yeah. has just been dominating here. Wow. Got to get the nice confidence work. back. Yeah, dog. All right. Nice work. Hey, thank All you guys right. for hanging out with us. These right. off-season editions of the Score North Twin Show. Please give us a five-star rating and a positive review on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. That's one of the best things you can do to help us keep growing this podcast, and we will uh, we'll hit you guys next week. See ya.